Chapter 2. Poppy Remembers A stinging sensation on her nose woke Poppy. She touched a paw to the sore spot and winced. Then she looked about in the dark and shook her head with confusion. Where was she? Under a piece of rotten bark? Where was the bark? On Bannock Hill. What was she doing there? She had come with her boyfriend, Ragweed. Where was Ragweed? No sooner did Poppy ask herself that than the full horror of what had re- occurred rushed upon her. Ragweed, dead. Eaten, probably, Poppy closed her eyes. The sheer ghastliness of the thought made it hard for her to breathe. Then, recalling how close she had come to the same fate, she checked herself for other injuries. Though her plump, round belly was white, the rest of her fur was orange-brown. She had large ears and dark, almost round eyes, full whiskers, tiny nose, pink toes and tail. Even for a deer mouse, Poppy was rather dainty. Upon examination, everything except the nose seemed to be intact. She stole a look out from under the bark and considered her situation. She was on Bannock Hill, alone and without permission. Oh, how she wished she were home. From her earliest days, just a few full moons ago, her parents had been teaching their litter about Mr. Ocox. She recalled how they had lined up all 12 of them to take instruction. Mr. Ocox has been about for ages, her father, Lungworth, lectured in his sternest voice. He was a rather stout fellow with elegantly curled whiskers and slightly protruding front teeth. His crowning glory was an ivory thimble he had found and which ever since he had worn as a cap. Mr. Ocox has been here longer than any mouse's living memory, Lungwork continued. The territory around him would belongs to him. Mr. Ocox is king. And he, he protects us, said sweet Cicely, Lungwort's wife and Poppy's mother. That's the most important thing. Sweet Cicely was a small creature, even for a deer mouse, with soft pale eyes and a nervous habit of flicking at her ears with her paws, as if they were dusty. Protects us from what? Poppy remembered Ragweed asking. An outsider, he had taken to hanging around their family. He was always asking for answers. Why do deer mice live here and not there? Why do you folks eat this and not that? Hey, why is your fur dark on the top and white on the bottom when mine is golden? Why couldn't it be the other way around? Though these constant questions could be irritating, Poppy had to admit she'd often wondered about the answers. Curiosity, however, was not something her parents encouraged. Poppy admired Ragweed's persistence. Mr. Ocox protects us from creatures that eat us, Lungworth answered gravely. Raccoons, foxes, skunks, weasels, stoats. One by one, he displayed pictures of these animals. Most importantly, he protects us from porcupines. Like this one. He held up a lurid portrait of a huge, black-nosed beast covered with gruesome spikes. Blood seemed to drip from his snarling mouth. The young mice gasped in dread. Porcupines are our particular enemy, Lungworth insisted. There's nothing porcupines won't do to catch mice. 
What would they do with us then? said Acorn, one of Poppy's sisters, in trembling voice. First, they shoot their barbed quills in you. Then they trample you, sweet Cicely added. Finally, Lungwork concluded, they break you into little bits and gobble you up. Now it was terror the young mice felt, all except Ragweed. Longwort, he demanded. Other than that picture, you ever seen a porcupine? A real one? Not precisely, Longwort snapped. But let me tell you something, Ragweed. I'd be more than thrilled to go my whole life without ever seeing one. After all, Mr. O'Cox has seen porcupines often in private conversations with me. Mind, these are actual personal experiences I can verify. He informed me that porcupines are not only extremely dangerous, but also devilishly sly. Taking note that this judgment comes from a meat-eating bird. The point is, Mr. O'Cox protects us from porcupines. It was he, in fact, who was kind enough to educate us about them as well as supply the pictures. Then how come you have to worry about this dude O'Cox too? Ragweed pressed. Struggling to control his temper, Lungworth tapped his thimble cap down over his forehead. Fuming, he replied, Mr. O'Cox protects us from vicious porcupines only when we accept him as our ruler. That's why all he requires is that we ask his permission whenever we move beyond the immediate area of Grey House. We have freedom to go to the old orchard, and we can do the same for Farmer Lamont's fields. At our own risk, of course. Life's full of danger. Go beyond, however, and we need Mr. O'Cox's permission. What's his reason? Ragweed persevered. Sweet Cicely, brushing her ears, sighed with exasperation. How Poppy, her own daughter, could take up with such an ill-mannered ruffian was beyond understanding. All the same, she said, Ragweed, as Mr. Ocox has patiently explained to my husband, he needs to know if we're moving about so he won't mistake us for porcupines. Asking permission is a small sacrifice to pay for our safety. Longwort nodded his agreement. That owl, he pointed out, has incredible vision and hearing. He can see or hear anything in the dark. And a good thing, too. Porcupines prowl at night, move like lightning, Mr. O'Cox says. Shoot quills without asking questions, kill without mercy. No, my boy, we don't argue with Mr. Ocox. He's our protector. If we disobey him, break his rules, and I can't say you blame him either. He gets upset. What will he do then? Asked Leaf, one of Poppy's brothers. He'll eat you. Lungworth replied briskly as he put away the picture of the porcupine. And... He continued, it happens. During the past year, we have lost some 15 family members. It may be presumed that all failed to ask Mr. Ocox for permission to go somewhere. The children were shocked into silence. Ragweed, however, spoke out again. Hey, Pops, didn't I hear you say porcupines are huge? You saw the picture, Longworth responded. And don't call me Pops. 
It's common. So, them porcupines are bigger than us, right? A lot bigger, sweet Cicely said, emphasizing the lot. Well, old lady, Ragweed kept on. If them there porcupines are so huge and we're so small, and if this dude Al has such amazing sight, how come he might confuse us mice with them there do porcupines? You know what I'm saying? An indignant, sweet Cicely looked to her husband. Longward sputtered. Ragweed, for your information, proper grammatical usage is not those porcupines, not them there porcupines. And while I'm thinking about it, if you intend to court my daughter, I'll thank you to groom your hair properly when you get up in the morning. And as for that earring you've taken to wearing, I don't like it. Not one bit. This family is committed to keeping up my values and is opposed to stupid questions. With that, Lungworth stalked away, tail whipping about in agitation. On Bannock Hill, Poppy remembered it all. She also remembered it was Ragweed who insisted they come up to the hill, but that he absolutely refused to ask Mr. Ocox's permission to do so.